do this. Yeah. Welcome to the SVR, Tommy. You've got all of the joys of a Range Rover. Super smooth, beautiful driving thing. The luxury that you can see, yeah. uh, carbon fiber everywhere, as well that. as the leather. Mm. Basically and two what? cars in one. side of the coin is whenever you put the foot down, <laughs> you've got a sports car. Yeah, so you're sitting in almost two and a half tons, right? Uh, and it will get you to 60 miles an hour in four and a half seconds. Wow, uh, four so, and a half seconds yeah. for it. The exhaust system in this, uh, we can actually control it, we can make it louder. Uh, or right. less loud, I'm not going to say quiet because it's never quiet, but you can make it uh, loud or less loud with this button. Okay. What that button does is open up extra valves in the exhaust. Okay. So, driving along 30 miles an hour, as we're in the 30 miles an hour now. Yes, good man. <laughs> yeah, put I'm the foot down. Come out of it. Sport box, foot down. Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Tell you what, that's some pickup there. So SVR, this is the first vehicle that Land Rover have put out from their special vehicle operations team. Right. Uh, they've got a, an operation going now called Special Vehicles, and the SVR, which is the Range Rover Sport version from Special Vehicles, uh, is what we're in. Um, right. We would have quite a few orders for next year, of which I'm quite excited by one. Uh, I have sold uh, a local guy from Dungannon. Uh, it will be his third SVR, but he's went for what's called Madagascar Orange. So no this way. is a three and a half thousand pounds option. But I'm going to show you what this car can do in a roundabout if we get a bit of a run here. So that's the traction control kicking in straight in the wheel. Away we go. I'm trying not to curse here because I know the camera's there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not the best passenger now. Is that right? I actually don't even want to be the driver, to be honest. <laughs> well, you're no, going to be. It's um, it's a machine, isn't it? For a Jeep, you just don't expect to have that sort of it's power ridiculous. in it. Yeah. You go 75 easy. <laughs> so, so we turn it yeah, on there. Yeah, put on the brake. Good firm press of the start button. <laughs> Fire in the hole, that's it. All right, off we go. Right, off we go. You're a wee bit small there now, and you put this up. Seats back. Indicate, Most people would be small compared to you. Indicate, me, mirror, fair. signal, and we're off. There's the car coming. Easy on now. Hello. <laughs> Jeez. The sun's out for us anyway. It's nice, isn't it? I have to tell you, I went to a rallying course down in Monaghan one time and um, the instructor got out of the car. Is that right? <laughs> I was the worst in the whole family. What are you telling me here, Tommy? Uh, well, I'm telling you to hold on. <laughs> with a bit of being uncomfortable but it's actually it's just some machine. Two cars and to be going for not 60 in four seconds and with this on top of this. It shouldn't uh, it shouldn't do it but it does absolutely. So what about you Tommy are you fit keeping well how's injuries? I am finally back fit yeah, you had I'm a glad rough, to say. You had I've, a rough run didn't you? I've had a very rough run um well, it's just been very, it's been very frustrating. I, I pretty much, I played one and a half games in 11 months. So I'm finally, actually, I'm on the week, uh, I'm on the bench this weekend for the first time in pretty much 11 months. Listen, playing rugby is, we're very, very fortunate to be in a position to, to play the sport that we grew up loving, but being injured and having to watch your teammates and your friends out there doing it while you're stuck in the gym or trying to rehab or getting physio, getting your knee back, it has been torture, you know, it's yeah. been a very, very tough couple of months, but... Um, How long is it since the injury? Well, it, that happened 60. in October, 
in Ono October last year so it was the last game of the World Cup against World Argentina Cup. yeah so that's 11, uh, coming up on 11 months um, mm. so so yeah so it's, it's been tough but I mean you know there's always that that goal that carrot of getting myself back out there and, and this weekend the fact that I'm, my first game back is going to be in Kingspan Stadium in Belfast against the Ospreys who were the team that I played for when I went to Wales yes yes it's, um, a bit of nostalgia there yeah so it's yeah. I mean it's not very hard to get up for games at the best of times but whenever it's kind of a lot of your old teammates you're coming up against Yeah, it'll be good to see the guys again. I'm sure a lot of them. It'll be great time. It'll be good to catch up, but uh, hopefully I'll run out a few good. tries. Eh? Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> well, we're going well at the minute, and you know, <coughs> there's the thing is, there's a lot of competition in the team. Um, you have obviously this. You have Charles Pietau, the New Zealander, who's just come into the team. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I can concentrate <laughs> talking about rugby at the minute. I think my nose is even running <laughs> in this way. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to go into training. I'm going to be playing in two days' time. I'm going to be going and complaining about whiplash. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the strength and depth that we have in the Ulster setup at the minute is as good as I've ever seen it, and especially among the back line. I mean, the, yeah. the players that we have now, you know, we... The two... Well, so you have two wingers who are on the Irish tour to South Africa. You have Craig Gilroy and Andrew Trimble, who are still fighting for a position. You have Jared Payne, who is on tour in South Africa. You have two young guys, Rob Little and Jacob Stockdale, 19 and 20 year olds who came through and were incredible. So, you know, really took their chance and, and are going to be putting the pressure on us older fellas. And then of course the new sign and Charles Pietau. So yeah. for having only, and Louis Luddock again, who's playing out of his skin. So to have three places, and you know that strength and depth and that quality we have, you know, is is a great pl- place for us to be in. So could could the squad put literally out two competitive teams? Uh, is that the aim to have two guys for every position? Or everybody talks, and it's you know, it's well known now, and certainly with me, the injuries that I've had over the last couple of years, that injury is is part and parcel of sport. It's part and parcel Especially of playing rugby, rugby at the yeah. moment. You know the the collisions that are involved in the sport now. You will pick up knocks, and now generally they're not going to be big long term ones. I've been very unfortunate the last while. Um, but they've been more just kind of bad luck more than anything else mm-hmm. but you will there will be times where you might pick up a dead leg you're going to be out for a, you know, a couple of weeks or whatever so that having that strength and depth and having you know if you are taking so many knocks it's nice to have a week off to let your body recuperate so, yeah. so having it pretty much two teams that are capable of playing at the top level is what what you aim to have you look at a lot, a lot of the French teams and the money they have available to them you know the likes of Toulon who've who, you know have won the European Cup I think three times in the last four years um, sorry there mate this is thank you very much very kind polite right here then. I'm not me barging <laughs> me barging through on the wrong side of the road um, yeah, there's big money there's in different big parts money. of the world there's big money to compete. in the likes of France and people all know about you know the the money that these English and French teams have but Ulster have been able to compete with those they've shown that you know they're able to hold on to their Irish players they're able to bring in the likes of a Charles Pietau or Marcel Coutsia who unfortunately has hurt his knee but would be expecting him back maybe December time so you know we've shown that there's all this talk with the money abroad but you know as far as Irish provinces go certainly Ulster we aim to be you know able to attract the best players in the world and and be able to to play you know play good rugby and hopefully go on to you know big be successful and I mean that's that's the plan Um, we have the infrastructure there we have a fantastic stadium we have incredible support you know we average 16,000 supporters a week which is you know unheard of it's got to be an absolute joy to walk out into yeah you know what my last my last game was in Zebra um, over in Italy where we played in front of a good crowd and, and the adrenaline of getting back playing you know I played then in Nace the rugby club the week before that in front of I think you know three men and their dog and the week before the, or the time I played before that was when I hurt my knee was the Millennium Stadium with the roof closed the quarter final of the World Cup so 
you know you have the highs and lows of kind of of atmospheres to play in front of and the Millennium Stadium in Wales is just it's hard to beat when the roof is closed it's there it is spectacular but the Kingsman Stadium you know, and and even the old Ravenhill, it's always been known for the support and the cheers and the crowd. And um... <laughs> you can't help Sorry, yourself. I have to stop talking there. Um, but that that atmosphere that we have in Belfast is. Uh, you know, when I was over in the Ospreys, we had some fantastic players over there, but they all look forward to coming to, to Belfast because, yeah. you know, you don't... It's not nice to play against a crowd that are on your back all the time, but it is... It's always nice to play and have a good atmosphere, and um, that's the one thing that, as soon as that crowd get on your back, it's hard to shake them off, and, and they really are. They, they are a huge impact and a huge help to us as a team, so... So I'm looking forward to this. This is my first time getting myself back out onto that pitch again, and yeah, I mean I haven't. Been a long time. Well, no, it's you know it's more because before the World Cup, you're probably talking about May June, um, so probably talking about 14, 15 months yeah. ago since I played in, in Belfast, and, and that's it's pretty exciting. Right, forget about the cameras, right. and obviously forget about injuries. And I hope you're going to make me jealous here. Life as a professional sports player. I thought you were going to ask me to drive straight through that. Has to be the best, is it not? Like, I know every day is every day for yourself, but what's that like? You know, you said yourself there 15 minutes ago, you, your life is playing the sport that you grew up mm. loving. Yeah, yeah. Tell me it's as good as I think it is. Obviously, the injuries is a big setback. Cut. Of course it is. My yeah. goodness. This is my... This is my 13th season of professional rugby, you know, yeah. I've been professional, I'm 32 years old, I had my first contract when I was 19 and for me, when I went through school, I went to school in Armagh Royal, uh, I bu struggled to make Ulster schools, I didn't play for Ireland schools, life as a professional sports person didn't look like it was going to be the path for me um, and the way things turned out I was very, very fortunate but you know, I grew up going down to Lansdowne Road with my dad watching Ireland yeah. play. I grew up, you know, I watched the European Cup success of David Humphreys lifting the European Cup. And you know, when you're a young fella, you, you dream, you dream of that stuff. And, and at times, I, you know, when I was younger, I thought that that dream was never going to happen. And when you get handed a professional contract to go out there to train with your heroes like Andy Ward and David Humphreys and Brian O'Driscoll and Paul O'Connell, and to be paid to do it. You're pinching yourself. And to pay, you know, to, and to be out there to play in front of 16,000 Ulster supporters or 50,000 Irish supporters. You know, you do, and you don't maybe take it, you, you, sometimes you could take it for granted, but we are reminded on, you know, on a daily basis of how special it is and how lucky we are. And the one thing that takes it back to realizing how special you are is injury, you know, because it does, Whenever you're in the thick of the thick of it, you're playing week to week. You're very much in a bubble, and you kind of you, you take it for granted a little bit, and you love it, and you're right in the middle of it. But when you're having to sit on the sideline and watch everybody else running out onto a packed stadium and singing the anthem, or running out into uh, into the Kingsman Stadium, and you know you've trained with the lads all week, but they're the guys getting to play. You yeah. Know, you know that's when it hits home of how lucky and that's why this weekend when I get to finally get to play again I can't wait <laughs> <laughs> I've sold these cars to, to very fortunate men uh, who have owned Lamborghinis and uh, owned Ferraris and owned all of them and I've heard it on three separate occasions from very very experienced very precious car owners mm -hmm. that this is the best car they've ever driven wow, because imagine. of that you know ticking all the boxes yeah um, it is it just, really, I mean to what? think driving for me to go from Dungannon back up to Belfast, you can sit comfortably 
60 mile an hour, 70 mile an hour, and just, you know, just be on the phone, no problem. But if you need to put the foot down, I mean, yeah. it really is. And you see, as you said earlier, it's two cars in one. You have the comfort of driving a, a Range Rover, but on top of that, then it's an absolute beast. It is a beast. I mean, it's, it's hard not to just put the foot down every time. Get on it. I don't think I'll be getting a job as a Top Gear presenter just yet, but if they get to do this all the time, it wouldn't be a bad job that, would it? Yeah, professional sportsman would be one thing, yeah. Top Gear presenter would be the next. Well, that's it. it. It's that's up actually, there. it is the one thing that if anybody asks you what would be your dream job, I think professional sports person is one, but Top Gear presenter <laughs> must be. It must be right up there. It sounds like you're putting an ad out here, Tommy, for retirement, don't you? Well, Chris Evans, Chris <laughs> Evans is struggling at the minute, isn't he? So, I mean, yeah. if you're looking for someone, Stephen, I think the two of us now would fill a role. I think so, yeah. Absolutely. Maybe yeah, do steal James Corden so he could bring in the celebrities for the back seat then as well and do all the singing and we'll just go and have the crack. You've known Raymond a long time, Raymond Donnelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, Raymond, Raymond and my dad and Raymond and Noreen would know family. my parents uh, for for a long long time would know would know the Donnelly family they know Terence and the whole lot for a long time yeah. and for me to be you know I've been involved with Raymond and Donnelly's for I would say coming up on eight nine ten years at this mm -hmm. stage um, which is a very you know it's, it's a very fortunate but you know thing for me to be able to be so close to Raymond to um, to let me drive some supercars and to be given the opportunity to come out in a car like this. So, uh, no, the fans of rugby uh, and indeed fans of yourself don't get much bigger than Raymond. No. He's an absolute rugby nut, he is, isn't he? he loves is, the absolutely game. loves it. He's a, he's a good supporter now, yeah. and I mean, of Armagh Rugby Club, I mean, the impact that he's made to Armagh yeah. um, has been he, phenomenal. He thinks of it as his own, you know, he yeah. really does. Uh, he, he, uh, he does absolutely everything that he can to, to help with the club now. Well, and that's what it's about, you know. You said, you asked earlier what it's like to be a professional sports person, but without the likes of Raymond Donnelly, without the likes of, you know, my parents who would be season ticket holders or, you know, everyone out there who is going and buying tickets, you know, they're the people that pay the wages at the yeah, end of the day. Yeah, they make it happen. And, and they're the people that are the reason that we can bring in someone like a Charles Pietau, who is a world class, you know, he's an all black, he's 24 years old. Um, he was someone that the all blacks have seen as, you know, one of their top, top players coming through. And for Ulster, Ulster, for Ulster to sign him, yeah. you know, to come over here and, and play is, I mean, it must be, it's just so exciting for us as players to play along someone like him alongside someone like him for young players like Rob Little and Jake Stockdale who are 19, 20 years old who have a huge career ahead of them you know for them to be able to learn off at All Black off you know internationals like Trimby myself and um, people like Louis Ludic who's come from the Bulls played super rugby down in the Southern Hemisphere um, you know, we're in a very very fortunate position but it is it, it all comes down to those supporters you know the, those those people who turn up to watch us week in week out uh, you know we play against a lot of teams that struggle to get the support that maybe some feel they deserve um, and I know going out to play in front of an empty stadium is very difficult that's why you know playing in front of the, the Ulster crowd is just incredible it's a big advantage and, and it's a huge advantage and that you know even teams coming over enjoy it because they love playing in front of a big crowd uh, well hopefully it goes well for you this weekend then I hope so yeah I'm looking forward to it I feel good yeah I feel great you know there's there were times you know where you're just wondering will my knee ever feel normal again you know you, you do rehab day in day out and you have good days and you have bad days and it makes you realise that when you do get back onto out of the pitch it's about going out there and enjoying it and that's that's my thing now I've been you know I've had a I've I've been part of that last World Cup and they were some of the best experiences of my career to be in some of that French game, you know, to beat them by a record margin in that World Cup with the crowd and the Millennium Stadium is just unreal. And when you kind of think, you know, am I ever going to get to experience that again? Uh, and and 
to know that I'm get, gonna get a game this weekend to get myself back out there and trying to play myself back in to the Ulster team, into the Irish team. You know what a it's not not a bad thing to look forward That's to. That's a good goal to have. Um, uh, yeah. I cannot cannot wait to get out there. <laughs> So, life as a sports person, professional sports person, I'll hang on in Don't there. Don't throw another, the question, you're hanging on in for another couple of years yet. <laughs> I'll do my best anyway, hanging on by the fingernails. I'm not the oldest in the squad yet, though, so I'm happy enough with that. 32. 32. 32. Surely you look, surely you look yeah, early boy. 20s, don't they? That's I? it, that's it. Um, no, I'm still a loser. There's Roger Wilson, 35. Position? Number 8. Um, Rory Best. Rory Best looks 45. <laughs> <laughs> probably is only, I think Rory's maybe 30, 33, maybe 34. Okay. He'd probably kill me, but anyway. I think he is, and he's a couple of years on me. Um, Franco van der Merwe would be in around that sort of age gap, and then me. <laughs> so number four, so I'm hanging in there. You have a few years then. Oh yeah. Is coaching something that would interest you? I don't think so. Never, no. never say never. Mm-hmm. But I think I'd like a new challenge. I love the idea of maybe getting into business of some sort. I'm involved okay. in a shoe company and clothing company yeah. that we do a bit of work with, and it's something that I really enjoy. I enjoy seeing how the real world works. You know, we mm-hmm. talked about being in a bubble as a sports person, and you very much are. You know, you game to game. You don't think of much else, and it's nice to it will have burst. <laughs> well, it is exactly, but it's nice to have something outside of sport to take your mind off. So when I'm going home and I'm in bad form, I've had a bad day. You know, I ring the lads in the office and we'll see how things have gone, see how sales have gone, and you know, it's a real touch of reality. And and I have studied and that sort of stuff too. And I'd like to, I think, a new challenge would be would be fun. It'd be you know something to get your teeth sunk into. But I'm in no rush to go there yet. And uh, we've made it home alive. You've made it somehow, home. <laughs> somehow. <clears throat> Got our SVR back in one wow. place as well, which was looking touch and go a couple of times there. But it's been great having a nice chat, man. Tommy. Hope you've enjoyed the SVR. I've absolutely loved it, Stephen. Well, thank you very, very much. We're going into the showroom now just uh, for you to pick your colour. Uh, and then we'll get on with Raymond here and get so, one ordered up for So what is this? What do you do? What's the customizer? did you say? Configurator. Configurator. Absolutely. So I'll pick the nice orange one. That's the one. Wow, thank you. Gentlemen. Top man. Excellent, I enjoyed Cheers. that.